guys. My name is Rodney. I'm from a company called Suspension Geek. That's uh, my shop. And uh, we're going to talk about bump steer today, um, mainly on first-gen Camaros. There's a lot of issues around that, and, and uh, the bump steer is pretty bad. So we're going to do some real basic explaining on this. And the reason I'm doing this is that I was, I was, I was on a forum or a page, uh, and somebody was saying, if you just make the arm level, the steering arm, uh, drag the tie rods, level with the steering arm, you'll have no bump steer. And technically, that's correct, depending on where you put the steering arm. So uh, that's partially there, but uh, we're going to explain why you really can't do it with the first gen and why you get screwed up when you do um, uh, rack opinions. So we're going to do a first gen Camaro suspension here. We're going to do the outer pivot ball joint, inner ball joint. This could be the lower arm. We'll go straight. We'll do the upper arm. We're going to assume that you already got a cool setup on there. You know, you've got some tube arms. You've already done a gold strand mod, which I've told you to do. And hopefully you did it. So well, here's your upper control arms. There's your outside, you know, your, <clears throat> your spindles here. Okay. The inside motors in the way. So why these two control arms end up doing the way they are mounting the way they are and why i have you do a gold strand mod because there's actually a um a line that these two connect to you know and they kind of go way in here and it's a little pivot and that the as long as these two are on that same plane you know you get a pretty good working suspension they work real nice work play together so then your third piece is your steering so ideally you want the steering has to match that same point. So if you make it level with the arm here, okay, we're gonna do a steering, we're gonna do steering, we're gonna do steering, sorry. We're gonna make it level. Well, it has to gonna go to downward angle to meet. Well, what happens is this is moving in a slightly different range right here, right here, right here, than that one. <clears throat> all the suspension works on a, 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 a basic, the, uh, I guess you'd call it a theory, but it's actually been proven and a lot of guys use it. I don't see a lot of guys talk about it, and, and maybe it's a magic secret the engineers hold on to themselves, but it's called the arc radius theory. And how it works is, you know, these two are working off the same pivot, and there's the center. So it's basically a gigantic circle. We'll just, you know, if we were to draw it, It'd be all the way out here, and there's the dead center of the circle. And as long as those two are working on that same arc, right? If they're connected, they're going to swing the same. And that's the theory or the idea behind the steering arm. So when you make it level with the control arm, it, it, the bump is wrong. You could do it if you moved it behind the arm. So you'd have to put it directly behind the arm and make it exactly the same level and strength uh, length across the back. But a first-gen Camaro can't do that, right? Because where's your steering arm on a first-gen Camaro? Way down there. Well, that's terrible. So if I made it level here, well, I got this huge arc going up, right? And what's going to happen is this can pull on a completely different range. So that's why you see bump steer kits often push this down. And why are they doing that? Because you're coming off the center, and they know it, and they want you to have this angle through the middle. So your outer control, your outer steering arm, sorry, is down. Okay. And here's your, here's your tire. You know, it's down. It's really close. And your inner pivot needs to be up. It's just real simple. And why is that? Because it needs to fit inside that same arc radius. Okay. So, you know, this one technically doesn't count for us for first gen guys. It kind of counts for everybody else. And then part two of this. So we've got the first part of the arc radius looking really good. Everything's swinging. We managed to figure this out. So there's a second part of this. And let's see. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Change color. There's a second one. It doesn't actually swing on this, but there is a second arc here. And it, it is these two connected. And they go up. And these two connect. And they go up. And they have their own spot that they meet. Kind of neat. And it swings in the same radius, okay? I mean, it doesn't really swing, but it works off the same theory. So if this was, you know, your basic circle, 
those two, that's why the upper control arm has to be shorter, has to, they have to meet towards the top. Now your steering arm, your link that goes in there, needs to fit within that triangle. So if you look at like a first gen, sure, you, you can put a line straight down and line straight down. Whew, thank God we fit right in there. Now the problem is the rack and pinion, right? Rack and pinions are usually short. And then you get your pieces coming up. So it's got this long arm, your accordion boot, and your pivot way in the middle. Well, that's outside the circle, outside of your radius. Now what happens is it pulls, it changes the angle. That's why just about, it, I want to say every kit, because I've asked a lot of different manufacturers, send me it, I will test it, and if it's fantastic, I will praise it. If it's not, then you need to go back to the drawing board. Not one manufacturer has ever sent one to me. And why is this bump steer important? So if it's pulling in a different radius, you know, you're driving along, and here's your, your uh, control arm. Oh, we need to do that bigger, don't we? Sorry. All right, all right, all right. So here's your control arm. Your steering arm is like this, right? And you turn this way, but you have bump steer because your tie rods are incorrect. So bump steer, if the steering is behind, okay, if it's behind the control arms, it'll bump out, it goes out. If it's in front of the control arms, okay, bump will go in. I can, we can explain this later. It work, you can actually use this to your advantage if you have like an independent suspension car or so on, but for now. So yours is behind on the first gen. So what happens is you hit a bump, this steering arm goes out, this steering goes out, car gets wandering because it's confused. It doesn't know whether it needs to follow this one or if it's going to follow this one. Same thing happens if you're racing the car, autocrossing the car, and you've done nothing to fix it. You're going to take your first corner, boom, boom, you're going to hit a bump. And one's going to go out, the other one's going to go this way. And the car's going to feel really loose. And you're going to think, man, I've got no traction. It's not that you have, don't have any traction. Your car's confused. It doesn't know which side to follow. So what you need to do is fix your bump steer. So when you turn your car, they both go the same direction. The car understands what it's supposed to do. Because the car only does what you tell it to do. It's not an animal. It can't be trained. It only takes the inputs that you give it. And you get the results back. That's it. All right. Go check your bump steer. Rodney, Suspension Geek. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you.